G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today I'm looking at this power distribution board from Volo. Volo is an Australian company, they do not have sweatshops filled with lots of dainty little Chinese ladies with delicate hands throwing things together at an amazing pace. Volo are different, they are looking to create high quality product which actually is surprisingly cheap given the amount of quality involved. I they sent me this unit for review and I thought, mm, looks a bit spendy, look it's got gold on it, look see this is real gold here people, real gold, you know, you could give this to your wife, she'd think it was jewellery. And uh, I said, I thought to myself, well, you know, um, this is going to be a pretty spendy bit of kit then. And I was quite surprised when I looked on the website and found out how little it was, considering how much is on there. So yeah, it's, it's good quality, but it's also at a good price by the look of it. But let's have a little bit of a closer look and I'll tell you what's going on here. What have we got for our money? Right, as you can see, as I mentioned, these are gold plated. And why is that important? Well, not only does it look good, but it makes it really easy to solder to. Now, uh, because this is something you're going to have to solder to, they had a couple of options, I suppose. They could have made them just bare copper, in which case it tarnishes pretty quickly and it can be hard to solder to a piece of copper that's tarnished. They could have tinned it, but again, um, the, the solder we use, it oxidizes pretty quickly too. So even a tinned land like that would sometimes be a little bit harder to solder to. So they went for gold, woohoo, and they succeeded. So there we go. Now, this obviously looks like a circuit board, as you can tell, turn it around, it says on the back here, it tells you what it is, the Volo the Power. The power that's a bit pretentious, isn't it? Anyway, um, on the back there's nothing to see here except the black solder mask. As you know, I'm not a fan of black, but it does go nicely with the gold, so give them that. Um, there are a few connectors here, I've already soldered in a couple of pins here. These are designed to take the servo type header pins. They give you these, see that? They give you those pins. So you solder those in, so you can use ordinary servo connectors to plug into the board. Over here I've got my main battery connector, these big um, thick booty wires and you notice here there's some holes so you can run a cable tie through these holes and really mount that firmly to the board so that when you have a bit of a crash or just even the process of plugging and unplugging your battery isn't going to put strain on these copper pads, or the, sorry, on these gold plated copper pads here and that's really good, it's, it's a wonderful thing for reliability and longevity. Now let's have a look at what's on this board because there is quite a bit on this board, it's not just your average little bit of copper with a few holes drilled. Um, it's got two regulators and the two regulators, the guts behind those is in this chip here. This is a uh, regulator chip, switched mode regulator. So these are buck regulators, which means they can drop a higher voltage down to a lower voltage. Um, these are the little coils that are involved in doing that. And you can see lots of capacitors along the side here for filtering and they claim they have a Pi filter to reduce noise. And a Pi filter is uh, an L filter with an extra, an LC filter with an extra C in it. They put a capacitor on either side of an inductor to make a Pi filter. Does it really matter in this application? Probably not. But it's a nice point on the brochure and there's certainly nothing wrong with having a Pi filter. Now, um, also it has this device here, which is looks like a little spider thing. That's another, it's not an integrated circuit. This, this is a diode. It's a low forward voltage drop diode, which means that you can actually wire this up the wrong way around and the smoke won't come out of it. Isn't that wonderful? Now, a little bit of a caveat there though, although the board itself, all these gubbins here are protected from reverse polarization. If you have ESCs connected to these pads and you connect this up the wrong way around, then the ESCs will still smoke because it only protects the stuff that's on the board, the regulators. It doesn't protect anything that's additionally wired onto the board like the ESC. So something to remember there. Now this is a four layer board, four layer board. What does that mean? Well, your average circuit board's got copper on one side, fiberglass and copper on the other side. Well, this has two other layers of copper inside the board, so they tell us. So it's a four layer board, four layers of copper. Why is that important? Well, when you're trying to conduct an awful lot of current from one place to another, you want as much copper as you can get. So bearing in mind that on the top here, we have to make all these little traces that you can't see because black solder mask is ugly, but you can't see the little fine, fine traces that join these components up. So um, if you could, you'd see there's not much space left for the big heavy current carrying traces that are supposed to connect, for, for example, this positive pad to that positive pad. So what they've done is they've used the internal layers to carry a lot of the current. It's great. It means you get extra current carrying capability without having to compromise the layout of your stuff on the top here. Now the specs say it'll do 32 amps to each ESC continuously with a peak of 50 amps. So this is going to work on a, on a medium sized quadcopter. Um, probably not a huge quadcopter because you can draw a bit of current on a huge one, but on a medium size, or you could use it for a tricopter of course, um, because it's you know, up to four ESC. So tricopters or quadcopters, obviously what this board is aimed at. Now there's another little thing in here that I haven't seen on any other PDB. It's this green thing, that's called a polyfuse. That's a little well, as you might suspect from the name, it's a fuse, but unlike an ordinary fuse, which has to be replaced or manually reset when it, uh, when it activates, 
these things are automatically resetting. So if you draw too much current out of the 12 volt line, this little fuse will go open circuit, won't make a noise, let's go open circuit quietly, and the voltage will stop coming out. Once you take the power off or remove the load, this little thing will then reset itself after it cools down, and suddenly it'll all work again as usual. So if you pop an accidental short circuit on the output here, it's not gonna fry up the whole board by drawing huge amounts of current and causing smoke to come out. Nice little feature. I mean, these are the little things that really make this PDB stand out from the other ones made in the little Chinese sweet houses. So hey, this is all positive, all good so far. Now, um, what don't I like? Well, you know, nothing's perfect, is it? We've got a regulated output here. It says six volts, six volts regulated output. And, um, Yep, 6 volts is fine. The reason they give for using 6 volts instead of 5 is because if you've got a tricopter with a servo, 6 volts will generally give you more speed and more torque out of that servo. And most uh, flight controllers and receivers and things are designed to operate, or they'll, they'll tolerate 6 volts these days anyway. Personally, I'd like to have seen that switchable from 5 to 6 because I've got some old NASE boards here which actually only work on 5 volts. If you put 6 volts in them, it really just about exceeds the limits of the regulator built into them. They, they, um, the Acro boards, uh, which are about a year old, they have a regulator that accepts a maximum of 5.5 volts input. And so if you're gonna put six volts in, it's getting pretty close to smoke time. So also there are five volt cameras out there. A lot of people have got five volt cameras. Most of the new cameras, of course, work from five to 22 volts or whatever, but there are still five volt cameras out there that people might want to use. And so why not? Why not give them the option of switching this from five to six volts? Most Ubex have a switch on them now between six and five. So you'd think just a little solder pad or somewhere, a little jumper you could change to set that, that'd be brilliant. But they didn't do it, so yeah. Because another thing is, one of the best servos you can get for a small tricopter are tail rotor servos of helicopters, because they're really, really fast. And a lot of the uh, old tail rotor servos lying around that someone might want to throw into a tricopter build, they're also only five volts. So you couldn't use them on here either. Yeah, I think they should add a jumper for a five volt option on this regulator on this BEC. Now, of course, that's the six volt regulator down here. We've got the 12 volt regulator down here. So this will regulate down to 12 volts too, which is handy if you've got 12 volt equipment. Things like LEDs, things like some video um, cameras are 12 volt only. Some of the, you know, still some, most of the board cameras you buy today, the PZ2040, whatever thing it is, that's a 12 volt camera. So you need 12 volts output. And if you're running a four cell or a five cell or a six cell pack, that's a problem. Unless you have one of these boards with the 12 volt regulator in there. And another big plus here, I've got to say plus to this, when the Volo people designed this, they had their heads screwed on, which is always handy because it saves you walking into walls. But what they realized was that if you're putting only 12 volts in, you can't expect to get a regulated 12 volts out. And of course, with a three cell LiPo, they start off at 12.6 volts, but they pretty quickly drop down to somewhere between 11 and 12 volts. So if you're putting in say 11 and a half volts in, you're not gonna get 12 volts out of a 12 volt regulated output because the voltage regulators used here can only regulate from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. They can't boost the voltage up. So they did the only sensible thing and they automatically disabled the voltage regulator when you use a three cell system. Now, I think they automatically uh, deactivated it. It's got two little solder pads here which for selecting your cells. So you can have four to six or three cells. But over here, we've got another solder pad which says disable 12 volt regulator. Now, when I set this up to run on three cells, the 12 volt regulator is disabled doesn't work. So I guess this pad over here is only for disabling the 12 volt regulator if you're running four cells or more. It's a bit confusing. Like I said, it's a bit confusing and the manual doesn't make it any clearer. So they could tidy that up. In my testing, I found that shorting out the three cell pad over here and opening up the four to six cell means that the, the 12 volt regulator didn't function. So that was good because it didn't get in the way and absorb unnecessary voltage. Because if you're running a regulator, and your input voltage drops below the required output voltage, you actually end up losing between half a volt and a volt just through the regulator, which is doing absolutely nothing. So you better to have it completely out of the loop, which is what they do on this. Excellent, top quality, wonderful feature. Now, I have thrown this on the spectrum analyzer. Why did I do that? Well, first of all, I put it on the oscilloscope to see how much noise comes out of here, because these switch, switch mode regulators, they can produce a bit of noise. I've done a video in the past showing that they work by chopping up the DC into little pulses, and then they vary the width of the pulses to reduce the voltage. And then they put them all through a capacitor to bring them back into smooth current again. Now that can leave some ripple or noise, as we call it, on the output voltage. So I threw this on the scope, and the output was pretty damn clean. I was impressed, quite impressed. How, oh, there goes my phone. However, I then put a loop on the oscilloscope lead and I saw that there was some radiated noise. When you bring this loop of wire on the end of the oscilloscope near the board, you can see noise appearing on the oscilloscope screen. Now that is because these things, 
inductors and things. Whenever there's a current flowing in a conductor, you get a magnetic field. So it was, it's radiating a bit of noise. To find out what frequency that radiation was on, I threw it on the spectrum analyzer. And here we go. You don't get this kind of stuff on the other review channels, do you? This is the, uh, the real test. Let's turn on the spectrum analyzer and see what we've got here. Okay, here we are. I'm going to turn this off so we can see what the baseline is. Here we go. Now, at the moment we're set to, what are we, 2.4 gigahertz band. I'll just move my marker over so that, um, where's my marker button? Don't use this all that often these days. Uh, here we go. There's a marker button. We're at 2.45 gigahertz, right? So just make sure we've got the maximum sensitivity here. There we go, maximum sensitivity. I'm going to plug in the, there we go, nothing. There's just nothing on 2.4 gigs coming out of this uh, regulator on this power distribution board. So hang on, let's unplug it again. Let's go down to the next most important frequency, which is probably around about GPS frequencies. And let's go down here to about one point something gigahertz. Maybe we'll go to 1.2, um, 1.6, 1.2, because 1.280 video. It says other little bits of noise around the place. Just plug it in and see if it's going to affect your 1.2 gig video. Nothing. Look at that. Deadly silent. Brilliant. Now let's go down to the next most important frequency, which is going to be 433. What's going to happen down at 433? Get any noise that'll affect your UHF radio system? 400. It's pretty noisy down here. You can see there's a lot of noise around the place from other sources. 440. Let's have a look. Is this going to contribute to that noise? Nah. Brilliant. There's no change. So this is a really quiet RF wise. You've got nothing to worry about with this. You, we do get that radiated noise. That's probably at a much lower frequency than it's going to affect directly our receiving system. So let's wind this right down to, as you can see, if we go along a bit here, this is right down. This is 30 Meg, what about 30 megahertz? This is old long wire stuff. Do we get noise here? Yes, we do. In fact, there's a bit of a peak over here. Let's go over here. See that? There's where all the noise comes from. We're looking here at the frequency of 60 megahertz. So that's all that stuff we saw on the oscilloscope. That's where it's at. It's down at 60 megahertz. And I'll just change the span a bit. We'll just make it look a little bit wider here and see how much that covers. Here we go. So there's a bit of a peak up here. So um, what about, I wouldn't want to use this perhaps with long wire, 72 megahertz radios, the old long wire. It's putting out a bit of noise on that band, so don't worry about it. But everything else, good as gold. So this gets the thumbs up for radio frequency emissions from me. You can use that with anything except old long wire gear. Now I don't know where else on YouTube you're going to find someone testing a PDB with a spectrum analyzer, but oh, I do it here for you. There you go. So what are my thoughts? Um, well, I tested the regulated output on this and it, it's pretty solid. They say you get a, uh, a solid, uh, what is it? It's, I think three quarters of an amp. I'd have to, the specs are online. Three quarters of an amp, I think for the 12 volt regulator, maybe an amp, I'm not sure. Um, and you get one and a half amps continuous on the six volt regulator, which is, you know, pretty damn good. It's, it'll drive w a, one or two servos, but I wouldn't drive any more because, you know, you look at your average cheap little ESC, they have a two amp beck in them and this isn't a two amp beck it's two amp maximum so yeah it's not really going to be suited to fixed wing models where you want to run a whole lot of servos off this regulator but for a tricopter yeah it's enough that's enough not a problem so yeah um there's a lot right with this and there's not a lot wrong with it i mean i have to say and for the price you know so i couldn't get over the price it's so damn cheap i think the us list price about 45 bucks <laughs> it's pretty damn good for all the goodies you get on there and i also yes i did test i reversed the leads on the input and no smoke came out of it and it still worked afterwards. Okay, I'm going to do the unthinkable. It's plugged in. It's working. See that the LEDs are on. I'm going to unplug it and I'm going to plug the wires in the other way around on my bench supply. So we're going to put black to positive and red. To Stand by. Oh, look at that. No smoke. Yes, it works as advertised. The reverse polarity protection does stop it from going up in a little cloud of smoke if you make a silly mistake like that. And I know people who have. Um, so that is another brilliant safety feature. Excellent. But as I said, if you've got an ESC on here, then the magic smoke will come out of those because it only protects this circuitry, not the output to your ESCs. If I hold it up to the light a bit, I probably see how it's all shiny. Even the components like these integrated circuits here have a shiny coating on them. And that's called a conformal coating. It's a really technical word. It means they just put a coat of varnish on it. Um, and why is that important? Well, if you're flying in a multi road especially something like a mini quad where you're going to be flying out there, you've got wet grass. The problem is that when you get moisture on these components here, sometimes the slightest little bit of current passing between two adjacent connections on the board can really screw things up. 
Now, I'm sure most people who have flown mini quads on wet days or on grass, wet grass have encountered the situation where it just goes crazy or the camera stops working or something else funny happens and because water gets onto the circuit boards of the camera or the flight controller, which aren't conformal coated. This gets around that by coating it all in an insulating layer of lacquer, which means that you can probably, you can squirt water on here. It's not going to make the blindest bit of difference. That's cool. It's a small thing, but it's really important if you want to make a reliable, robust device. Oh, I should also mention, forgot, there's a couple of little LEDs on here. There's one for the 6 volt and one for the 12 volt. Now they say that these indicate that the voltage is within 10% of specification. So that's, uh, what is that, 6 times 10, that's um, at least 5.4 volts for this one and it should be at least, what is it, 10.8 um, volts for that one. However, I found they were a bit out of spec. They were a bit out of speed, not by much, just a little bit. So, you know, bah, nothing here and there. I've got to find something to grizzle about, don't I? Someone give me a break. So there you go. Um, yeah, voila, excellent. Looks good. I'm going to use this in a build coming up. And um, it's a nice little bit of kit. So thank you, Volo, for they sent that in for review. I didn't have to pay for this, but it doesn't mean I wouldn't tell you if it was crap if it was. But no, it is a good product. And I'm really glad to see that we've got someone other than China and America throwing out good products for flying RC models. Thank you very much. You've got questions, you've got comments, stick them on the bottom of this video. I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, I've got to clear the bench. There's more to be tested before the end of the month. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.